Our next guest, uh, Andy Slavitt, came to us by a slightly unusual route. I wrote a piece quite critical of Andy's uh, latest initiative, the United States of Care, and raising some questions about it. To his credit, he reached out to me. We spoke on the phone. He agreed to come on the program and talk about some of those questions, and uh, I appreciate him for that. He, uh, he joins us now. Andy Slavitt is a senior advisor with the Bipartisan Policy Council. He is uh, heading up an initiative called the United States of Care. From 2015 to 2017, he was acting administrator for the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. In that role, he oversaw Medicaid, Medicare, of course, the Children's Health Insurance Program, and the health insurance marketplaces. So he joins us now. First of all, Andy, thank you for coming on the program. Thank you so much for having me, Richard. Absolutely. And secondly, in your own words, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, the United States of Care? Great. Well, thank you. Uh, look, we have a great moral imperative and a great opportunity now as a country to take, I think, the finishing steps so that we can have coverage for everybody in this country. Uh, it has been one of several of the great moral lapses of our country. And, you know, my own uh, history and thought process goes a little bit like this. Uh, you know, I got an opportunity to serve in the Obama administration to help implement a law, which I think everybody would say is imperfect, but was, uh, was an enormous battle to get done, to get uh, more people access to affordable care, to get rid of things like pre-existing conditions and, and lifetime policies and caps. And I just saw the magic of what it did in people's lives. And I left the administration really not knowing what I was going to do. And uh, spent the last year uh, really fighting defense uh, and trying to just prevent even the gains that we had made um, from going on. I, I did town halls across the country with Americans who basically, uh, when you drop politics, want the same thing. Uh, they want to be able to afford drugs for their families, they want to be able to afford to go to the doctor, they, they want a regular source of care. And so I made the decision along with um, some people that I recruited on to do this to say, let us stop just playing defense and let us play offense. And let us try to put together the resources necessary so that we could once and for all end this uh, state that we're in. And the view is I think pretty straightforward that we're not going to likely get anything done in this Congress between now and the uh, end of 2020, 2021. However, um, as soon as we come back with a new Congress, maybe a new president, uh, we'll have that opportunity. And so what work should we be starting now? What building blocks should we be putting in place now so that when we do come back, um, we will have the kind of success that we've never had before in this country? And that's really what uh, the organization that I founded, United States of Care, is focused on. Well, I guess, you know, it sounds good, Andy, and, and um, I don't think there's any reason in principle why uh, most people would disagree with that. I think one of the concerns that a lot of people have, including me, is that, you know, we can say, you know, putting politics aside, but in the world we live in, politics is is inevitable and in fact politics has a role to play right we de we debate our policy disagreements through politics i think the concern is that is that if we make it a bipartisan initiative uh, that really there are so many fundamental philosophical points of disagreement that it, 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 it's going to be nothing more than a feel-good exercise or maybe even worse, something that makes people feel they're doing something when nothing is really being accomplished. How do you advance the ball if, if you're just, you know, we're all in this together? It's kumbaya, it's, it's kumbaya material. Yeah. You right. get what I'm saying? No, I Sure, I, I, I totally agree with you. I don't think there's any room for mushy middle, you know, lowest common denominator, common denominator compromise. We're highly polarized. Uh, we're wholly polarized on these issues. But here's the good news. The good news is that when you get outside of Washington and you get into anywhere around the country, um, people don't want their family's access to care held hostage by politics. 
And so when we say, uh, you know, putting people over politics, it's not a matter of ignoring politics, it's a matter of using politics and policy to leverage what the American people already want. Um, and, you know, I, I'll put it to you this way. Um, I have fought tooth and nail for the last year to get uh, to the point where we could get 22 Republican congressmen and three Republican senators who would be uncomfortable supporting repeal. And we just barely got there, but we prevented repeal. What if we can take those 22, take some Democratic victories in 2018, 2020, turn that 22 into 40 or 50 and turn that three into five or 10, because people will know they're gonna get voted out if they move to take people's health care away. Then we're leveraging politics to the point where people come back and don't have a choice. So I want people to swim to our principles and to the right ideas, not to, not to compromise the ideals we need to compromise. One of the things that's happened over the last year and a half is people across the country learned what it is that they have to lose. That, that as imperfect as the ACA is, people were really, really threatened by the fact that cutting Medicaid, getting rid of the ACA and all these steps backwards would be a huge detriment to their lives. And so we now have to take that energy, which I think exists across the political spectrum, by the way. I think Democrats, Republicans, independents, people who don't identify, all feel that way because it's a very human emotion. We need to leverage that for the kind of political victory in the next, uh, the next five, six, however many years it takes. Uh, we need to just work at it. Well, I'm not, uh, speaking for myself, and I think a lot of people, I'm not at all opposed to. I support the idea of preventing rollbacks that are going to hurt people uh, immediately and in their lives. I, people, I, I, mean, I think of states like Kentucky, where, uh, where the Kentucky program uh, uh, has done so much for people. Many other states like this like to expand the you know, Medicaid coverage rather than see it retracted under the expansion that took place under uh, the Affordable Care Act. I think the concern is that, uh, you know, we really need uh, twofold. I think one is that the Affordable Care Act, I think we've learned that it has many points of vulnerability, politically and otherwise. We need something that's broad and bold and that people understand. Um, and I think that while we're taking these defensive actions, which I think most of us support, we need to also be offering an affirmative vision. And if that vision is mushy, it gets uh, diluted. Yeah, I agree. I Look, I, I think for major, major legislation to pass, I think there's three ingredients. The first is a big, bold vision. The second is, um, I think, the very, uh, the, uh, the, the unsexy mechanics of, of policy, stakeholder building, um, uh, you know, the, the basically the, the, the difficult work of writing legislation and um, making it work. And I think, the, and then the third is it, it takes a small army, a vol small volunteer army uh, of the country to unite behind and push through the tough spots. Um, you know, if it was easy, as President Obama has told me over and over again, he's told all of us, it would happen already. So we know it's not going to be easy. Uh, so what I'm focused on is, um, that, you know, there is, there are big bold visions out there. How do we how do we help support those big bold visions, whichever visions get us to the goal line? Number two, how do we do put in place the mechanics who can help actually make things happen on the ground? The 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 sort of dirty, unsexy work we have to understand how those pieces work and how do we accumulate those experts? How do we get the resources to do that? And then three. You know, there is a small volunteer army already. We just need to expand it. We need to expand it so that it exists in all the places that make people who are going to vote against people's health care uncomfortable. So I think we have a role to play. I don't think we're going to be the people that get it done. Hopefully we can help, though. Well, uh, then I guess the question comes in a, up if, if, if you're uh, incorporating a broad series of views here, if you're interested in bold initiatives why doesn't it seem like there's anybody participating in your group who's a single payer advocate? You know, the question has come up, are you guys opposed to single payer? Bipartisan Policy Center says one of its groups, one of its goals that I found on the website 
uh, is policies that promote stable private insurance markets. So, uh, you know, why aren't nurses involved? Why aren't single payer advocates involved? Uh, you see why these questions have come up, don't you? Yeah. Well, so look, first of all, I think any criticism of our effort uh, is something that I pledge to listen to, uh, and, it, and it's it's sort of valid. I don't think we're the main point, by the way. I think, you know, people are making me maybe a little too much out of what we have the power to do. You know, we, we actually need to help things. Uh, we do have single payer advocates involved, like Don Berwick, uh, who is one of the kind of one, a really great policy thinker who started a major single payer organization as one of our uh, advisors and one of the people that that helps me and I'm very 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 close to. There's others, the first lady of New York and others. But my, you know, my point isn't to try to prove um, the bona fides. Actually, to the the point uh, though that I would make is, you know, people are express some concern about some of the names of people involved, and I think you know there's really somebody for everybody to like and somebody for everybody to hate. And it's kind of the point. I mean, if we go into um, a state right now where we are trying uh, to get people better access to care and coverage, you know, we need to know how we need to know how to relate to the people in that state. So it helps to have different uh, people who we can, you know, pull out and leverage. But what, here's the important point: uh, nobody associated with the organization gets to set the policy at the at the lowest common denominator level. That's not the idea. Um, the idea um, is is fundamentally to just get as many people across the broadest spectrum as possible to say. You know what? Enough is enough. We need to get health care for everybody and we need to work hard to do it. And if there's lots of people who disagree on who are affiliated with our organization. My effort is not to try to get them to agree. And my, nor is my effort to agree with any of them. I think, you know, as the chairperson, my views uh, are probably as closely associated with how people think United States of Care is going to operate. Um, although I will tell you this is to be much bigger than me. Uh, I've made uh, very little um, I mean, people, I think, understand based upon not just what I believe in, but what I've done um, with my life and what I've done with the last few years of my life, that I've been very clear. I want to get every American access to care, period, uh, that they can afford, that uh, they, they no longer have to think about again. And I can use, you know, the, the, the thing that's important to me is, the, is where we need to be as a country. We have... Um, if, if, if my child or your child were to go missing, and we were to call the police department and say, can you go look in the park for, the for my child? They wouldn't ask if we could afford it. They wouldn't right. ask if we had a copay. They wouldn't ask anything. They would just go do it. That's how healthcare needs to be in this country. And I spend a lot of time in, in England and uh, all over the world. One of my closest friends runs the national health system. Um, and you know, when you go to England and talk to people about healthcare, you're not talking about money. That's the principal benefit. Now they've got a lot of other challenges, uh, and everybody does. Healthcare is indeed one of the most challenging topics. But we got to get into the details. We got to get into um, how, figuring out how to get from here to there. And you know, don't uh, don't uh, you know, don't expect us as an organization to be the people that are the principals at the table. But I do expect that we can come alongside those people with big visions, with big ideas, and try to provide the mechanics. So are you, uh, sorry to interrupt, but uh, again, we're talking with Andy Slavitt of the United States of Care. So are you talking, uh, are you envisioning the, the organization as a grassroots organization, as an advocacy organization, as a think tank? I mean, it, it seems to have elements of both. Maybe that's a source of confusion in the uh, uh, public mind and the response. I just lost you for a second. Could you repeat that? Do you, do you see the organization as a grassroots organization, as an advocacy organization, right. as a think tank? There seems to be some lack of clarity there. Yeah, I think it's the think and do tank. I mean, we don't, um, you know, we need to leverage the best ideas out there. We need to bring real resources to bear because there are people who bring real resources to bear against getting coverage for all and getting coverage for more people. Um, you know, I want to be a resource to legislators who want to promote big, good ideas. I want to uh, be bring academics together to help find new and even better ideas to big challenges. Uh, we have... Today, we have cures to things like leukemia that we can't pay for. 
uh, and we need very practically get at those solutions. We don't provide enough mental health to people. We need to get at those solutions. I want to provide help to states, technical assistance on how to write policy and how to do grassroots organizing and how to bring, bring people together and how to do polling and how to understand messaging. Those are all the mechanics, right, that are at the heart of things. We will not be successful. I will not judge us successful until we reach the point where everybody in the country has coverage, period. And if we, so there are a lot of roles we could play. There are a lot of organizations doing a lot of great things. You know, we can, in some cases, be a catalyst to working with those other organizations and in other cases, fill holes that aren't being, that aren't being filled and provide resources. We're working with the state right now where we're helping to provide a lot of the resources they need to help expand Medicaid uh, in their state and to get Medicaid as an option that everybody can buy into. There's a lot of work to be done. All right. Well, I, you know, uh, we could we, we could take this conversation in a million different directions, but unfortunately we're out of time. So Andy Slavitt, former uh, administrator of CMS and uh, head of uh, United States of Care, uh, thanks for coming on the program. We genuinely appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me, Richard.